what's up guys so as you saw from that starting video um, this is a bipedal walking robot that I built uh, basically is controlled with this neural network over here and the idea is um, well simply uh, through multiple generations of me giving fitness of how far the robot moves it learns to walk so the robot has four joints it's controlled with four servos so um, you can see right now there are both set there are, uh, all the servos are at 90 degrees that's why the blue line is straight um, uh, you can also see that the state of this the, the population there's a total of 10 neural networks in each generation so this is the first one second third um, so these are all the neural networks and it loops back to one so uh, each generation has 10 neural networks and I basically assess how far the robot moves and give it a fitness I mean not really how far it moves if I see two neural networks have you know moved the same amount of distance but one of them used uh, the joints more efficiently or moved the joints a little bit further compared to the other one that's just you know sort of um, jittering I might give the one that's more elegant a higher fitness so that's how my assessing goes and so the assessing part is all manual. If I click generate, it actually generates uh, 10 new neural networks. This button um, I actually don't even use. Load the uh, file, it creates um, 10 neural networks uh, from scratch. I can save and load at each generation step. Um, next, to go to the next neural network, uh, and previous to go to the previous. Uh, test, if I want to test, it, you can, I can start testing it. You can see it's moving. Uh, the battery, I actually disconnected the battery from the servos, so that's why the if you're not hearing it move right now. Um, I can stop the test, and then maybe I'll want to give this, I see that it moved a lot. You know, I liked the like how far it moved, I'll give it like, you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then I can go to the next uh, neural network, and maybe I tested this, and I thought it was kind of crap. And I'll give it like negative 100. <laughs> so... This is basically me assessing it, and this is what I would do by looking at the robot. Next. So uh, if I click finish right now, it actually gives me a little thing. It says that uh, I haven't tested 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I only tested 1. Uh, I have to give fitness for all these before I can it can um, uh, mutate and basically go into a selective process. I, it keeps the 50% best. And mutates them a little bit so that's how the other 50% are uh, created so I'm gonna just apply fitness one apply next 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 apply okay next so all of them I've, I've applied a fitness to so now I can click finished oh what I missed two whoops okay so I'm gonna give finished so now we're at generation two uh, next. so one through five are the new neural networks that are created mutated from the uh, six through ten hopefully that makes sense so you can actually see this if I go to next 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 you, know, you see the fitness is zero if I go to here it's 0 0.1 I just kind of made it so that it like I know whenever I get to uh, fit, uh, neural network number six that now I'm starting with the old uh, generation uh, the previous generations neural network that survived the 50% process uh, hope uh, hopefully that makes sense so next so basically I have to give fitness to all of these I'm gonna try to show a close-up of this robot so this right here is a HC-06 Bluetooth um, slave shield um, so that's this is what the computer is basically connecting to and um, right now I have the um, uh, Arduino powered through a USB, which is connected to the computer, but I don't have to. I can have it uh, powered through a battery, which is right here. I unplugged it. Um, so there's four, four servos, as you can see here. There's one, two, uh, three, and four, and they're all set to 90 degrees right now. Um, and the idea is that uh, this chip here is actually... Uh, I'm too scared to take it out because I think it's gonna break that's why it's there but it's not doing anything nothing is connected to it as you can see um, so 
the computer that's over here whenever I run it. Right now you can see that the Bluetooth is currently blinking. Uh, when it gets a solid connection it turns red. So I'm gonna run the file now. So there you go. It's connected. And then I can, um, you know, as I showed before, I can um, do anything I want. So I can test, click test. Uh, you can see it moving, but oh, whoops. Uh, next, you can see it sort of moving and doing stuff. But uh, this is not moving right now because I have the power for the servos unplugged. So I'm going to plug in the servo power. And it's moving. Uh, pretty slow, right? I'm gonna load, so I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna load the file that I've already created and I've done it up to generation 12. It took me about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna load that one and show you guys. So, and so this is the neural network. I'm gonna click load. Test. So there's 10 neural networks um, that just loaded uh, because you know it saved the entire generation into a file. So this was number one. Let me stop this and show you the 50% best from the previous generation, uh, which will be six through ten. So I'm going to show number uh, network number ten. Quite amazing how far this one's actually able to move. So number nine is actually even better than this. So I'm just gonna load network number nine. Stop this one. Test. Cool. So imagine if I was able to do it up to generation 100, how amazing this robot would be, would be able to... I mean, how far this robot will be able to move and how fast. Because this robot is not efficient in using its leg like, at all. And, oh, whoops, that was a lot. But I got this light support, what the hell? Be more careful about it. Uh, stop. Uh, network 8. Oh, this one is really interesting. It's doing that uh, weird bipedal walk thing. Like where, it, you know, one leg goes forward, another one goes back. Cool. This one I would have probably gave the higher fitness to compared to the other ones. Because, I, you know, this is way more elegant, even though, you know, they're the 50% best. This one is probably one of the better ones out of it. Stuff. Number seven. Yeah, I would have. I would have. I don't know why the hell this is here. I would have failed this one. I didn't like that one. This one? What? This is number six, guys. How the hell did you pass my test? Stop. Well, now I'm gonna explain what the neural network actually means, what the input and outputs are. Um. So let me just stop this. It looks a little annoying to look at. So um, the first four here are the angles, the angle of the joint, okay, with respect to um, the maximum and minimum angle. So um, the angles are basically converted down to between negative one and one. Um, so if the maximum angle is 45 degrees and this is 45 and the angle currently is 45 degrees, then you know you divide the two and it becomes one. Uh, the next four here are um, uh, if the angle becomes maximum it turns one if it becomes minimum it turns negative one so this way the neural network knows when um, the joints have reached a maximum angle the last eight uh, purples purple ones are the memory neurons these um, output purple ones uh, loop back and connect into the uh, the purple input 
okay so this is how this how the network gets a little bit of memory um, without these it's actually really hard to create a network that's able to um, you know walk far uh, if like literally I had um, four uh, memory neurons and the performance of the robot was absolutely horrible compared to what it is right now so if anything I should be adding more memory neurons the now you can actually convert so this output the black parts you can black and red parts you can actually think of each four as one so one two three four think of it as joint one the next four joint two the next four joint three the next four joint four okay um, basically the first four it's the joint one is competing with which one is gonna affect it so the first one means negative 15 so sorry the first one is 15 so the joint is going to move 15 degrees uh, forward the next one is going to move five degrees forward the next one it's going to move 15 degrees backwards um, and the next one it's going to move five degrees backwards okay so whichever one of these is the highest that's the one this joint um, that's the one this joint picks so in this case um, it's this joint is gonna would have moved 15 degrees forward, okay? The same with the next four and the next four and the next four, okay? So you can so if I click test, you can see it blinking. So that's what this joint is doing. Uh, you can even you can kind of see it. It's moving 15 degrees forward and 15 negative 15 degrees backwards. That's why you know it's blinking. Next. This one is basically in, uh, reached a stale position, uh, which happens quite regularly with um, new neural networks that are created randomly. So these ones I would have probably like a, like a really low fitness to. Um, uh, if you see the receive OK count and the send data count, that's basically the uh, the Bluetooth communication between the Arduino and the and the computer it's uh, the send data is actually should be four times larger because it's sending four um, um, characters to the Arduino um, for each joint what it should be doing um, but I just decided to divide by four and it's a little bit easier to look at and make sense like how much information is sent uh, if I click stop the next change that I'm going to be making to this project is uh, literally I'm converting this neural network to a uh, a dynamic neural network uh, with neat neural evolution of octopedic topologies because I, I want this um, network to be able to create its own memory neurons and I feel like with neat the behavior of this robot will increase drastically compared to what it is right now. Anyways, thanks for watching. Um, see ya.